Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me today. I'd like to show you today twist envelopes. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sure these guys actually have a real name. For me, they're twist envelopes. They're a great little envelope, just a different type of envelope, but great to make for your journals. So you can still journal on them. They just undo. Now you can have something in there or you could actually um, pop something in there. Hang on a moment and I'll see if I can find something. Oh, let's have a look through this. I've got a little square. Probably, it's not the right size, but you'll know what I mean. So you could have another little journal card inside your little envelope. Now you can make them any size you like. They're so quick and easy to make. Once they're made, they just fold one, two, three, and your first pocket, of course, goes in there. As I said, any size you like. We're just undoing. And there you've got him. They are the quickest and easiest things to make. You can do them any style you want. This one's been done with a scallop circle punch. This one's been done with a larger circle, so a three and three quarter inch circle, I think it was, but it was just a die, a metal die that I ran through my big shop machine. Now, to pop them in your journals, and this is my current journal, so yeah, you can see I'm still part way through my signatures. So they can just, yeah, I'll undo my signatures. Right, so you can use them as a tuck spot and have them tucked in. Or you can, yeah, we'll go to a blank page. Go to a blank page, go, here's a blank page. Here's one I prepared earlier. And actually adhere this backing to your page so that they're adhered to your page pages decorated or however you want to do it and then they just open from that they're a great little thing to do and so easy you could sit and a great way to use up your scraps again you know me I love trying to use up all the different scraps that I have so what we're going to do is do up a couple of different ones and then I'll show you an even quicker way so four circles one, two, three, four. That's all you need in whatever size you want them to be. This is a two inch circle punch. So from that, we will need, I'll use that, which is the rest of this paper. And I'll grab my trimmer. It's a two inch circle. So I want a two inch square to go with it. And I'll try and straighten it up because this one's been torn both sides. I'm going to get rid of that. And I do. I'll just even that up. And, oh, it's not a straight square. Anyway, and down into this side. Hopefully I'm in shot. It's a bit skew with that square, but you'll get the gist. Right, it is easier with a non-directional paper. If you're doing um, book pages, etc., things with wording, you've got to really think about how they all fold if you want them all up the right way. Non-directional paper, this is just an all-over flower print. So, original circle, we're just going to fold him in half. I'm hoping that my camera is angled towards the front this time so that I can actually get things closer. And use your bone scorer or um, scissors. Use the handle on your scissors to push them down, your ruler, anything just to get a nice sharp crease in them. So do that with all four circles. And down. Now you know me, I like to ink, so I will ink around each of these. 
I only need to do the side that I'm going to show. And of course, I've got that one. So I will ink each of these. Again, I'm using my walnut stain. And just quickly go around my edge, fold him in half and do my edge. That's all we're inking. So around my walnut stone is getting um, low on ink. I really need a new one, so I have to keep dabbing it in and picking up more ink on my blending tool. Makes no difference with this one which side I actually use. Don't know if in the background you can hear my dog barking who has been asleep the whole way through until now. So she's going to sit there and bark. Right. Now, when I've done these, I've played with lots of different glues to see which one was best. I've used my glue stick. I used just a glue stick. I've used double-sided tape and glue sticks. And then the last one I did, which I don't even know where that one is, I just used my normal white glue. It gave me a little bit of time to move things around and I found I didn't end up in such a mess. So just follow around on the back side or the non-inked side of your circle. Pick him up and going onto the square just against the edge. So and this one gives you a little bit of time to manoeuvre and move him down if you need to. Make sure I've got no glue coming out. Oh, I ended up in such a mess earlier on. Right, next one. And down. And this is why I get in a mess. I keep turning it around and ending up with glue everywhere. So the same as we closed them and opened them, we'll put them in the same way. So we've gone one and then the next side. Again, give him a little bit of a move so that you've lined that up beautifully with the edge of your square or as close to as you possibly can. As I said before, my square wasn't totally straight. So we'll do as best we can. You'll get the idea anyway. All right, next side. I'd say she's telling me, the dog that is, that she's just, fit. I heard her go for a drink, so she's telling me now her water bowl is empty and we just need to do the one woof, just to say, listen here, Mum, stop doing what you're doing and come out and deal with me. Um, daughter's away, husband's at work, Son is here, but he will be gaming with his mates, so he'll have headphones on and conveniently not be able to hear the dog. Okay, last one. That's it. It's done. Right, that's it. How easy was that? Now, with these ones, what I've done is I've popped another square in there to cover this up. So we're going to fold him. So one, two, three, and four. <laughs> Aren't they easy? Aren't they just so easy? So from that, you can decorate them any way you like. With these ones, I've popped another piece on the back. Just, actually, that's an old book page. You know how you've got book pages where you've got writing on one side and then nothing when it finishes the chapter? I keep all those ones because they make lovely journaling posies. Um, this one is all marked because my walnut stain blender foam is starting to disintegrate and I really must fix that. This one I've done the same. I've popped on a piece of white and I've then just inked over it with antique linen. And then I can decide whether I want them adhered to the book, 
to my journal or whether I want them as tuck spots. Now, another, as I said, I promised another quick and easy way. I've done that. So technically, I've got a template. That was a two inch circle. Whenever I'm starting to make anything up and it's in my head, I play around with, I've got beside me, I have scrap pieces of old copy paper. These are ones that I've done from work. So I've adhered him and there he is. But what I've now got is a template. So if I sit those aside, and again, a great way to use up your paper pads. Your bigger ones, you can use your 12 by 12 papers. That's what that one was. That one was done from a paper pad. That was some scrap um, 12 by 12 paper. So this was just out of a paper pad that I had sitting here and I've pulled out a sheet. I'm going to sit that one on here and I'll trace around it. So then I have my template always sitting beside me. What I have is a book with templates. I can't see a thing I'm doing there. Oh gosh. Right. Come closer and I can see them. There you go. So just tracing around. Now for me, as I said before, I ink everything. I ink for two reasons. One, I like the look of the ink and it grunges it up. Two, if I'm hand cutting circles or curves or something like that, there you go. If I'm hand cutting anything like that, the ink takes away where it might not be completely curved. So I'll just cut this down into a smaller size. Sit that one to the side. And now I'll just very quickly, <laughs> You can see what I'm doing. I'm moving my paper more than my scissors. My scissors are actually cutting, but what I'm doing is moving the paper so that I get more of a curve. If I've got a larger template, then I will use larger scissors. This is only a small one, so I'm only using my small scissors to do this. Sorry, did I just bump the... Um, I have a tripod set up for my camera because my desk is rather long, so I can't get a little clamp to, to fit from the edge to where I'm actually filming. So I actually have a tripod on my desk, but it does mean occasionally my left arm will hit it as I'm going around and I'm not watching what I'm actually doing. Okay, so nearly finished. My lighting might be a bit different tonight too because it is after work. Um, I ran out of time on the weekend, which is when I normally do my videos. So it's now eight o'clock on a, I have no idea what day it is, Tuesday. It's eight o'clock on a Tuesday night. So, right, I've got those now. And what I want to do is put my folds in there again instead of having to put them onto my square. So what I tend to do is I will use my ruler, match up my corners and just give them a little bit of a crease with my fingers. And then I can go back with my bone scorer and actually fold them properly down and give them a really good crease. Now, the other thing I need to do with this one, because I've traced around it, I need to just double check. I've got no pencil lines floating around there because this will be the inside of my envelope. So everything is white and I don't have the other bits showing. So now I can fold these guys over. So one, two, like that. So now we'll ink around it. Back to my whatever I've got, walnut stone. 
the three I always have sitting in front of me are Walnut Stain, which is a dark brown, Brushed Corduroy, which is a mid-brown. These are all in Distress inks. And Antique Linen, which is a light antique linen colour. Strange that, isn't it? So, now what I also want to do are those just to give them a grubby feel. As I said before, this is just what I like to do. You don't have to ink. There's no rules to say that you have to ink or don't have to ink or whatever else. It's whatever you like. So now we've got that. One, two, three, and four. So we'll go slow, will we? So one, bottom, right. I'm no good on my directions. Top and left. And then just tuck that bottom left piece in to that section. And that's all there is to it. Now, this one is the full thing, so it's like an actual envelope. Now, we can decorate that and put little bits and pieces on it. Um, this one, I've just used some little cutouts that I've got and some jute string. This one has some cheesecloth and a floral that I've inked over and a word. So what are we going to put on this one? Let's, it's only a very small one. Let's find, if I go into my little add-ons box, I have a little bit of cutouts. Oh, it's going to be noisy, sorry. And let's just tip them out because it's easier, those that tip out. And they're all small ones. I have another one of these boxes called large add-ons, strangely enough, which are bigger pieces. But for when I'm working on little tiny bits, these just work a treat. And they're out of the paper pads or they're out of little bits that I've cut around. Some of them are from the Field Notes collection of Tim Holtz. Others have been from papers. Um, that one was a paper, a 12 inch by 12 inch scrapbook paper that was all embossed and it was tickets. But on the edges, of course, there were only little bits of the tickets left. So I just used those and they've become little add-ons. So I have all sorts in here. So I like something like that, but it's too white. Uh, for me, it's too white. I like my grungier vintage colours. I'd, I'd love to do something white. Don't get me wrong. I love white. And when I see people's work that's all in that beautiful white and tones and things like that. I've just got so much admiration for them. But when I sit down to do it myself, I just, I can't do it. So I know what I can and can't do. So I stick with those. So I just want to ink a little bit further around that. So I've used antique linen and now just on the edges, just to darken it up. I'm going to use my vintage photo. Pop some lids back on. Pop some lids on the glue because I haven't used the glue for a while. Nobody should have told me that. Now, I want. I want to want to want. What's sitting on my table? I have so much mess sitting on my table. Let's have a look. There's a little bit of lace there. We don't need much because it's a very tiny envelope. Anyway. So, I'm just, sorry, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'd like one of these really little circles, but I don't know if I've got one in the right colour. So, let's just have a quick flick through. Um... Circle, circle, circle. Oh, I had some still sitting. No, here's a... They're all red. They're all red. That should be in the labels one. Oh. Um, I had... I just had a great thought. And now it's gone. Oh, I know what it is. Hang on. I have some little wooden stamps. T 
10 and 6. So let's have a look. I just need a piece. Of, that's the rest of that. Um, in, let's have a look. In an archival ink. I always use my archival inks for when I'm stamping on something because they give me a good, crisp, clear stamped image. It's just a tiny little stamp, so I'm not worried overly on putting my stamping mat underneath it. Now, do I have, do I have, just excuse me, I've got a little circle there. Does it fit in that? Yes, it does. All right, this one's going to be noisy because it's an old, old circle punch. Sorry. Right. Get rid of that. Put that there to pop all those in. Put some of them away. I always find it's easier if I just tip them all out. And then I can see exactly what I've got and what I haven't got. That and that. So now I need to just get rid of a little bit of white from that. So and wipe all the ink off that and I'll go round it again of course in the walnut stain. No she's not her water bowl's not empty I've just listened to her drinking again. I'm gonna say because I filled it up not that long ago and um, I reckon she wants to go at the back door. Okay, so I can go through and tell all the adults of the house. How's that? Um, I can go through and tell all the adults of the house to be quiet. I'm about to do a tutorial, but you just can't do that with the dog. All right, I'm just going to pop a little bit. Big, come here, please. What's up? Our puppy dog is a little Welsh corgi. I'd like to say little, but she's a good size. She's also getting old these days and thinks that the entire world revolves around her, of course. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of, I'm just using my 450, which is a fabric glue because I've got the lace. So because I've got the lace, I used it on my envelope to adhere my lace and now I'm using it on this which again is going to adhere on top of the lace. Just give him a little moment to stick and because this one's going to go on both again I'll use my fabric glue. Just like that. This time we might do that glue up and of course as per normal it's Stuck to me. I go down there a little bit so I don't lose too much of the writing from that one. How's that? Can we see that? Uh, where are we? There we are. Have we gone in on it? So aren't they just so quick? They're just such a wonderful little envelope to make. So I hope you've all enjoyed that. And I know some of you will have been making these for years. I never finished that one. Some of you will have been making these for years and can do them in your sleep. But there may be some of you out there that have either not seen them before or seen them and not known how to make them. They're not daunting at all. They're a very quick little envelope. And as I said, if you make yourself a template, do a couple of different sizes, so all you're doing is a circle. Now, I've used a punch, so that's a two-inch punch. That one, as I said before, was a metal die. If you don't have a punch or you don't have a die, let's say you're just starting out, look at, thing, ooh, look at things like your double-sided tape. You've got a perfect circle there, this side or this side. Draw your circles cut around them. Don't be too concerned if they're not perfect circles. 
that's where your inking will get rid of those wobblies because it's what the eye is looking at. And so when they're inked, it takes the eye away from a perfect curve. Always look at what you've got around you to trace around. So you don't have to have a plethora of punches or dies or all the trappings that we all like to get with our craft. If you're just starting out, think small. Work on what you've got and then over time you will see things that you use a lot of. So you might find that over time you're forever cutting out circles. So it might be something to look at to get a few circle punches or you're wanting more, you're cutting out more and you're doing more. So it might be something then to look into a die cutting machine. Sun's finally come out of the bedroom and has just let the dog outside. I've just heard the door then. There you go. See, occasionally someone does hear. All right. So as we were, always start small. You don't need everything to start with. You can make beautiful little bits and pieces. And as I said, these were just little cutouts. Yes, I've ended up using a stamp that I've had forever. Let's say we didn't have that. You've got a paper pad or you've got... Um, all right, so the paper pad that I just used on that one. Let me find it. All right, so this is called Magnolia Grove, and it's been around forever. They have the die cut sheets. The other week I did the tutorial on other ways to use your die cut sheets. But let's say what I've got left in here. You've got bits and pieces. Let's just have a quick look. There's some beautiful papers in this. So, all right. So you could cut around those. And I know they're small, but trace around. Mm. All right. I have a finger dauber. They're a couple of dollars. And they're a great way to ink around things if you don't want to go out and get that sort of thing. Sit them in the center of something like that. I'll just move all this stuff along. So sit him around about in the center. Let's have a look. About there. Trace around it. Fairly close to the center. Cut him out. And it's surprising just how big that finger dauber is actually. So if you've got yourself a pair of scissors, a ruler, um, I like small scissors and large scissors, depending on what it is that I'm doing. I like to fussy cut and all the rest. So scissors, a ruler, um, a rubber, a pencil, and a paper pad. Now you can see from that circle that, see how it's got wonkies around it, wonkies? So if I get my ink again, out of my walnut stain and just go round like so. What it does is it takes the eye away from how wonky your circle is. Whoops, dropped it. So now you've made yourself an embellishment that can go on. You don't need everything to start with. Always look at what you're doing to start with and go from there. See, something like that, you can fussy cut all these little roses out and you've made yourself more embellishments. Something like this as well. It's a matter of looking at what you do have around you without, at this stage, wishing for the moon. You'll find as you go, you will collect items and get items and all the rest. Journaling, like any craft, is only as expensive as you make it. It's just something that you build your stash over time. <laughs> See, the dog's still playing up. Now she's going out. She's been out the back door. Son's let her out. Son's let her back in. Now she's going out the front door. So he's very quietly just walked past me with a wave and is taking the dog out the front door. 
That's because I'm occupied and mum should be doing everything. <laughs> so on that note, we might go and deal with that. Um, thank you all for watching me today. I'm sorry I digressed with everything else. But really, just look at what you've got. You don't have to have all these punches. You don't have to have all these dies. Play around with what you've got. Make do with what you've got to start with. And then expand from there. You don't have to start off with everything. I hope you've enjoyed these. I hope you go away and make lots. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Because they're just so exciting and fun to make. And as I said, any size possible. But make yourself a template and then they're even quicker. Okay? Thanks, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please hit like. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I would love to have you on board. Thank you. Bye.